Hello and welcome to Global Health TV. We have a very special program for you today. As you know, swine flu is very much in the headlines and we're going to look at the whole gamut of infectious diseases. And today we're going to look at the importance of, of hygiene in tackling those diseases. And I'm delighted to be joined by Sally Bloomfield, who has just authored a very important report on the subject. Sally, welcome. Hello. Back to Sally in a moment. Swine flu is, of course, the infectious disease dominating the headlines. Margaret Chan, WHO Director General, has warned that swine flu could become the biggest flu pandemic ever seen. However, most cases continue to produce only mild <laughs> symptoms. The overwhelming majority of patients usually recover, even without medical treatment, within a week of falling ill. But at the same time, it's spreading fast. In past pandemics, flu viruses have needed more than six months to spread as widely as the new H1N1 virus has spread in less than six weeks. And while governments rush to order vaccines to protect their populations, people in general have a role to play in preventing the spread of infection. Now, Sally, you say in your report that all of us share responsibility for trying to prevent diseases such as swine flu or even the common cold. Is that fair? Well, despite our obsession with heart disease and, and cancer and all those diseases, infectious diseases worldwide still exerts a huge toll on health and well-being across the global community. For example, 10 million deaths every year across the world from infectious and parasitic diseases. Now, the, the, the global health budget to deal with those dis diseases is huge in terms of providing us with antivirals when we suddenly want them, or antibiotics as an ongoing concern. The, 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 the cost is, is enormous. So we have to find ways of trying to prevent these diseases. And we now know a recent uh, WHO report suggested that uh, by uh, water, sanitation and improved hygiene, we could uh, reduce the global burden of disease by up to 9.1% and reduce deaths by 6.3%. So hygiene is one of the ways in which we can prevent diseases. But of course, hygiene is all about shared responsibility. It's not something the government could do. It's not something the local authority can do. It's something that we as a family in our homes and in our everyday life have to do. It has to be shared. Now, you, you, you give a lot of uh, emphasis in your report to the role of the family. Uh, what do you think, how do you think we can help the family? What sort of role do families need to play in good hygiene? I think we need to change in mindset because at the moment, if you think about it, the separate aspects of infectious disease like food hygiene, uh, care of small children, the treatment of infectious diseases from people in hospital, MRSA, health care of the elderly at home, they're all dealt with by separate agencies uh, who give advice to the family. Actually, what, the, what we need to do is to look at it from a more family-oriented perspective. You in your own home, you've got a family, you have to cook for them, you have to look after the baby, you've got to protect your elderly parents at the same time. We really do need to stop looking at this problem from an angle which is uh, convenient for the agencies and look at it from the point of view of the family, and what they know, understand, need to know and how we can get them to change their behaviour. Now does this approach, does this approach go across borders? Can we use the same approach in the developing world as we can in the developed world? Yes, I think so, although the entry point is quite different because for the last 10 to 20 years there's been a huge investment on improved water, improved sanitation, the Millennium Development Goals, and we all know about that. What has become very apparent in the last five to ten years is that if you don't incorporate hygiene promotion in with those, uh, with those uh, programs, then the health benefits will not be uh, commensurate with the investment which, which is made. Uh, it's all very well having good um, sanitation and faeces disposal, but if you've got the, the faeces on your hands and you don't wash your hands, then it's going to be transmitted. So, but, so it's more the entry point. It's doing it through the water and sanitation programmes, which is quite different from the way we uh, approach health promotion in developed world urban communities. Sally, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us on Global Health TV. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by Mike Mandelbaum, who's Chief Executive of TB Alert. Mike, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Don't you think there's a bit of a danger at the moment that all the focus that's on swine flu is going to take attention away from diseases such as TB? 
Swine flu is a very serious pandemic, so it's no surprise that there's so much attention on it. But tuberculosis is a disease which has been neglected for many years. It really hasn't taken that much attention away from it. This is a disease which kills still 1.7 million people a year, yet it's a curable disease. And if there had been more focus on the disease over the last decades, we could have been a long way towards eradicating TB completely. So Mike, many people in the global community would have thought that they'd actually tackled TB some 50 years ago. Well, there were many advances made in the first half and the middle of the last century. The BCG vaccine was discovered in the 1920s, and there were developments in the drugs that are used for, for treating TB, which is a curable disease. But we're still using today the same diagnostic tools, the same vaccines, and the same drugs that we were 50 to 100 years ago. So there was a lot of complacency that set in, as people thought, especially in the Western world, that TB was a disease of the past. Give us a flavour, if you will, of some of the more recent developments in tackling TB. Well, there has been more focus and there is more political will today on tackling, uh, on tackling TB, and especially in the development of new tools. In those three areas of diagnostics, of vaccines and of drugs, there's a, what's called a product development partnership for each of those, which is a mechanism for bringing public and international funding to develop new tools. Uh, for example, in the area of vaccines, the product development partnership ARAS is at the moment in a late stage clinical trial in South Africa for a vaccine which will make the BCG more effective. And just in the last week, they've announced the extension of that vaccine to people who are HIV positive. People who are living with HIV are especially vulnerable to tuberculosis, and it's especially important they access treatment fast and they access effective treatment so that their TB can be cured and they can then be given antiretrovirals to continue their lives. Mike, thank you ever so much in, indeed for joining us today. Pleasure. Well, that's it for this show, but keep tuned for all the latest developments on global health from around the world. Thank you.